There's been mud on my soul. There's been anger inside me. There's still unforgiven deeds that now it's time to free. I've been trapped inside so long. Don't remember how to live. How much of life has passed me by as I slept inside my dreams. Oh yes, sip the waters too. Let them wash all over you. surface of the mind and the mirror of the mind then cannot reflect back the real you. This mirror is very vulnerable to every whip of dust every breeze of desire to keep the mind taintless to keep the mind dustless is to achieve that stage of spiritual beauty sundaram the three words are connected and interconnected with each other john keats has says has said in one of his poetry true beauty is truth and truth beauty truth true beauty is truth and truth beauty satyam is sundaram and sundaram is satyam one can take any path and reach shivam the highest the ultimate the path of truth the path of beauty the true the truth is beauty and the true beauty is truth so the tool the vehicle is mind it's a journey of it's a journey from gross mind to the subtle mind the subtler the mind becomes it starts seeing things in entirely different light the boy, mind which is so body conscious sees body. A mind which has become soul conscious sees soul. Everything is occurring at the level of mind. And what is mind? Mind is not noun. Mind is verb. Mind is verb. It's a process. It is not thought, it is a process to be, to think. There are three functions of the mind. What are they? To think, to feel, to desire. 
thoughts, feelings and desiring. Psychology says mind has got these three functions. So when in the spiritual sense mind becomes subtle, the three functions are affected. The thinking becomes very deep. The emotions become stable and desires the worldly desires get transformed into spiritual desires. But the same mind, when it becomes very gross and body conscious, it loses its beauty to churn, to think, to cogitate, to contemplate. The refined emotions are lost and the desires become gross, material, mundane. And the mind with such temporal desires is dragged down into temporal desires. Baba often uses one phrase which has come in yesterday's Murli also, which was that Sauso Karis Shringar Poe Ba Khodade Vo Put Khodado. This is Sindhi. So no matter how many times you decorate a donkey's son, a donkey's son will ultimately remain a donkey's son. Its very nature would pull it. So this phrase or saying has got two meanings. First meaning of course is the same. Baba says I come and decorate you children so many times and what you do? You go and start rolling in the mud again. That has become an addiction. Body consciousness is an addiction. It's the very nature. Soul has fallen in love with body. So long it is one's own body. It's okay. But when it is somebody else's body, the problem arises. So this extra corporeal love affair Extra corporeal love affair is the root of all the sorrows. So the first meaning of the phrase is that Baba decorates you so much. So don't again go back to the mud. Mud consciousness, soil consciousness, matter consciousness, whatever name you give it. A uh, matter conscious mind thinks of matter, it dreams of soil, eating soil, touching soil, playing with soil, enjoying soil and this is a trap, it doesn't allow you to fly. The world of spirit is different than the world of matter. When you start relishing the world of matter, the world of spirit disappears. And when you fly high up in the world of spirit, the matter doesn't stay, the matter disappears. But this is the story of fall and rise. So why we go back into mud? Why the donkey loves mud again? We need to find out triggers for body consciousness. There must be some trigger. The trigger is sometimes Murli itself. In yesterday's Sakar Murli, there was one question. Children ask, should we marry off our children? Baba said yes. Should we buy this plot, this house? Baba said yes. But sometimes they also ask, Baba, should we indulge in vice? Yesterday's Murli, Sakar. This is not the thing to be asked, this is tantamount to foolishness. Yesterday one brother called me up and said, everything was going on well, but yesterday's Murli when I was sitting and listening to Baba's Murli, and when this statement came, should we indulge in vice? Suddenly, sitting in the Murli itself, the old memories got triggered. 
the old memories of vices got triggered and the whole day the previous memories attacked me murli itself became the trigger the old memories of vices and it took lot of time to come out of them the trigger is so subtle the trigger is absolutely subtle the stimulus the philip is very very subtle it can come from anywhere but to identify that philip that trigger that stimuli is important because that trigger that philip takes you down into body consciousness so baba never intended baba just gave the example and he even clarified that this is a thing not to pass asked and this is foolishness but then that point became a trigger which is so subtle and dangerous so triggers of body consciousness you can churn this what are the triggers of bc it could be anything some person clothes objects things tv mobile song internet places advertisement news anything smell dialogues anything could be anything some taste could be a trigger you eat something because food is associated with emotions food has got its memory i just ate something and i reminded of my childhood my mother used to feed me that way so this food has nothing to do with the mother but this food has triggered the childhood memories the same taste so there are food taste patterns in our mind so when we eat something don't see think that we are just doing it for nutrition purpose we are reawakening the past memories and the most potent trigger is smriti memory of past indulgences these you can remove remove every from the, everything from the room and you feel oh now i am safe i have removed everything i have stopped using mobile everything has been removed so now i am safe but how can you remove memories they are within you so you have to transform their nature you cannot suppress you have to understand them face them see them and know their worthlessness worthlessness of past indulgences worthlessness of past fasanas this lustful desires no their wastefulness understand their futile nature their temporary nature they are perm- impermanent they came and they destroyed they came and they destroyed they have got a lethal destructive tendency they destroy everything which is sundaram everything which is beautiful all the beautiful feelings and emotions of divine love and they bring you down to physical love the mortal love which is addictive the journey from platonic love to physical love platonic love means non physical or spiritual love is known as platonic love in the language of literature so identify triggers what are the triggers from where they came which place what time sometimes a particular time is a trigger time morning it will not be there afternoon it is not there but the moment evening comes the trigger comes 6 to 9 o'clock in the evening evening trigger sometimes the trigger is place otherwise you are okay but the moment you enter a particular place you are reminded of something 
the trigger is relationship the trigger is some person fragrance but these things can be both good or bad could be anything that's why utilize everything to your own advantage take use of madhuban so when you are in madhuban fill yourself with those divine vibes try to catch the spiritual vibrations which are here they say that sound is indestructible sound is never destroyed there are something known as akashic records what you speak that is recorded just as you have a cd or a gramophone that record everything is recorded in the similar manner there are invisible records in the air so what i speak that gets recorded automatically and if my frequency becomes subtle i can listen to what hitler said what shakespeare said what kalidasa said in the past what brahma spoke what dadi spoke what happened in history all what happened near shanti stamp everything can be relived revived remembered so identify triggers and methods gimmicks tricks to overcome them so that is the first method first meaning of that so so karisa shringar thousand times lakhs of times baba is decorating and per day and again and again this desire for mud bath is intense <laughs> the second meaning of the story so there was a salt merchant and he had a donkey and they would to travel every day and in between they would come some a river so the donkey was extremely lazy he had to carry so much weight of that salt bag so when accidentally he fell down into that river and when he got up he suddenly found that the weight is light so he got the trick so every day the salt merchant would travel through that river and the moment the the moment they would pass through that river the donkey would accidentally fall down he would deliberately fall down and the weight would become light the salt mer- merchant understood this <laughs> so what did he do next time sponge he loaded the donkey with sponge and as is usual routine when they were passing through that river the donkey deliberately acted to have fallen down and when he got up <laughs> it was extremely heavy and the owner and his master started beating him and then he had to limp back to his destination so the journey was really difficult <laughs> this is another story of donkey i wonder why so many stories are created around donkeys <laughs> and monkeys <laughs> there are many stories around donkey and the word donkey is not they are not respected as creatures once we have to call somebody a fool we say you are donkey how we got to know that they are fools a child prays to god oh god please make me donkey in the next birth god says this opportunity is given only once and you already been given now it cannot be given again so the story indicates about laziness we are spiritual effort makers and laziness is the enemy of raj yoga meditation and sleep is the enemy of raj yoga and less or until you overcome this spiritual lassitude laziness there cannot be any progress in the spiritual path 
So, but nobody accepts that I am lazy. What exactly is laziness? It's difficult to define. Because what is laziness for me may not be laziness for you. What is laziness for you may not be laziness for me. The definition is different. Spiritual laziness. One can churn this. There can be. There should be. Individualized, tailored definition. One definition cannot be given for all. What exactly is laziness? Laziness is to seek the path of least resistance. What is laziness? Is to seek the path of least resistance with minimum effort, with least discomfort. We don't want discomfort. We want to live in the our comfort zone. Unless until you step out of your comfort zone, there is no growth. This is what is your comfort zone? This is my Amrit Vela, four to five. Then my some seva or some rest, and my Murli time, and my food, and uh, some seva, and then rest again seva and rest. This is my pattern. I don't want anybody to disturb this. Don't bring anything new. If you bring any new change, don't. I don't want change of departments, change of seva. Change of food, change of Amrit Vela, change of place, nothing. Keep it as it is. Because this is my comfort zone. The moment anybody comes and tries to disturb this, I look at him as my enemy. And if he's my boss and I can't do anything, I start standing Sakash to change his mind. And if he's my junior, I can scold him. And if he's my colleague, I move away from him. So I have only three options, senior, companion and junior. The problem arises when the changer, the game changer is senior. I can't do anything. So the definition of laziness is to remain in the inside the comfort zone. Spiritual revolution takes place when you break all your old patterns. You throw out aside all your comforts to live in the stage of insecurity, to enter into the defenseless zone when you are unarmed is spirituality. Courage is not to become fearless. Courage is to advance with all your fear into the territory of danger. With all your fears, courage is not to become fearless. The fear is there. But with all your fear, you enter into the danger of unseen. You enter into the world of insecurity. Surrender means to get rid of all the securities. No security, no guarantee. No backup. Total insecurity, a suraksha is spiritual life. You go where you are going, don't know. When St. Francis of Assisi started his monastery, there were only two rules. One was poverty and second was, what is that video shot? One was poverty and second was celibacy. He had given rules to his fellow colleagues. You have to, when you go out, you should not carry anything with you. When you move out, you should have nothing with you. There's a good statement by Francis of Assisi. He's telling his fellow men that you have to be like this. If thou wilt be perfect, go sell what thou hast and give to the poor and follow me. Take nothing for your journey. Neither staff, nor wallet, nor bread, nor money. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 
These three verses will be our guide. These three verses will be our guide. That's a movie, Saint Francis of Assisi, one of the best movies on the life of a saint who led his life towards God consciousness. If you are going anywhere, don't carry anything. If you are moving anywhere, don't have anything. Except God, none is your support. Don't think, don't take anything with you. Just move into the defenseless territory. Om Shanti.